Guys, what a podcast you have to listen to today. I mean, we're sitting with two guys that are doing billions of real estate. If you don't learn something from these guys, you need to get out of the industry because it was so epic talking to the guys that we look up to and they're just like all of us. So listen, enjoy. Hopefully you learned something. Comment below, share this. People need to hear what we're talking about and uh, enjoy this podcast. Hey man, thanks for coming to the podcast. Yeah. I will say this. It is so crazy what the greatest thing has come in this industry. I've had three people that I've idolized in this industry and you're one of them. And like we were talking before the podcast, I found you on YouTube and like, just like the way you made your vlogs were so sick that I was like idolizing, how do I get to that level? And now I'm sitting across from you. So I thank you for that, man. And the funny, oh man, I, I'm grateful that you said that. And the funny thing is that now it's flip flopped. Oh I'm, really? I, I'm watching your stuff. Oh, I'm watching your, oh your, your shit and say, man, Side, Adam, do you hear that? Adam is, is, is doing it right. And it's just basically how you, you know, like you said, we both were inspired by Gary Vee, right? Mm -hmm. And but basically just putting it out there, not I any mean, nothing, nothing, no, 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 no candy coating. Yeah. Just put it out there how it is being a real estate agent in our, in our markets and just basically doing how to raise the bar in the industry. Yeah. One of the best yeah. vlogs I ever saw you do was when you ran it through like the process of selling that home and then you had like you had to go through and then you did the step by step on selling the process. Like I've been trying to do that so many times, but like sometimes it happens so fast it doesn't work in a video. And your sellers won't let you put it in the video so you're like but i really want to make this as a video like can we like can we it's not like put the house on the market wins it can we slow this down a little bit so i can make some content out yeah of it? the camera guys i mean you you're, you're hiring the camera guys it's not really day one day two day three mm -hmm. it's actually like what two three weeks yeah but we just condense it all in day one day two day three but people, people don't, don't understand that they don't so, un yeah. they don't understand like how long it takes the video and then edit and then put something out yeah and then it's like and then you have the what ifs of like all of a sudden the audio didn't come out or the s scene was blurry and then it's like yeah. you missed and then you get pissed have you ever got pissed at your camera guy where they, you, he missed something you're like how do you miss that like what are you doing your job is a video <laughs> <laughs> what are you and, doing? Then, <laughs> and then the vlog comes out and you're like what happened where's that piece at and he's like oh yeah i didn't get it and you're like oh my god i don't even know why you work here for you so <laughs> how did you come from you've been doing real estate since 1999 what was the step for it to be like on video and like what made you like get your first videographer because that's so unheard of in this industry yeah. even though today at the side event we're at the side event up in napa they had someone talking about how important video is and then tom ferry's shouting video like crazy he's been shouting for years but what was that finally step where you're like yo i need to make this make yeah. this move. And katie lance too right yeah, yeah that's what i'm saying yeah. katie lance yeah, today yeah, was yeah, talking about video, video, video yeah she she's always shouting outside yeah. Yeah. about video and so what was it about you like what was that like aha moment you're like i need to do this so it was funny it was, it was back in i forget it was 2016 or 17 so gary v spoke at inman mm -hmm. and he's on stage talking about how talking about how um just being out there and he's talking about snapchat snapchat this snapchat that so okay all right so i got my cell phone out I started, you know, doing snapping here and there, and then I was like, I was like that, that guy. I was a guy walking around just going like, <laughs> like this the whole time. Dude, this is kind of a pain. Yeah. And uh, it's funny. I was, I was actually fe featured in Wired magazine, and they they sent a reporter down here to follow me for a day, and then she wrote a whole article about how the Snapchat has reached the olds. Oh. <laughs> and, she and so that's why Snapchat fell apart. <laughs> yeah. Alex, are you the reason Snapchat is no more? Did you also take down Vine too while we're at it? Yeah, Did you right? take down Vine and Snapchat? <laughs> Makes sense. Yeah. So, so I was like, you know, I'm I'm tired of this. It's really a lot of work, as you know, it really to be is. able to try to try to uh, produce yourself, right? So you know, phones like you know, what? I'm just gonna hire uh, a videographer like a D Rock, Gary V, mm -hmm. and just follow me. And I'm gonna invest that money there and create content. And I felt like it's either that or like people in my market in Silicon Valley, they're still paying two grand a, a pop for a, new, a full page newspaper ad. Isn't that crazy? They're still doing that. That's and, crazy. And, and the newspaper's only alive because of the fact that they're only in business because of real estate. Because of agents. the real estate is yeah, paying for it. Yeah. And it's like, like page, full page ad after, 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 after. I could do that or I could allocate the marketing dollars towards creating actual content that I have some, you know, creative, uh, you know, input into and push it out to the world, right? Do you struggle with like, I mean, I wanted to ask you this question is like, you are now a real estate influencer, even though if you don't know it, but like, how has that been a shift to you? Like we're at this side event and like, I'm joking around, but I'm like, you're here and then you're on this video and then you're on that video and now you're over here and over there and you're like, you're working this whole time. Now you're doing this podcast with me. Like how is, when, when were you like, holy crap, I am an influencer in this market. 
I don't, or he I don't, I don't think it. I'm an influencer. Man. I do. I, I don't think I'm I'll give you I, pre- I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. I think I think um, you know, I think really now I, it's just more so. If I'm an influencer, I think it's because I want to influence real estate agents, right? Mm-hmm. I think just like you do. Yeah, I want to. I think everyone and their mother is, has a real estate license now, and I, I can't stand it because mm-hmm. it just low, lowers the bar in our industry. So if I can create thought leadership content to show how agents should be acting, how should, they should be behaving, how they should be building their businesses, that will help get the shitty agents out of this industry and help raise the bar for all of us. Yeah, I mean, I think that's like the biggest thing that's like most frustrating. Do you ever wish you could show more? I wish that I wish I could. We were talking before the podcast like about doing like what agents say and like it's like we have to walk this fine line of like what we can show with other agents and not show like i think people are like man you're so real and so raw and i'm like i'm literally holding back because i wish i could do more yeah. like have you ever like you and your team like made something or got on camera and you've sat there and like oh man should we post this or should we not or like can we get in trouble for this like, close or, your eyes and just press yeah just press hit just hit like post yeah, post yeah yeah i mean pfft. Dude, I think that uh, there's so many agents that, that should not, so many clients that really are, their agents are doing disservice to them, mm-hmm. but you can't tell the clients that, right? Isn't that crazy? Yeah. You, you can't tell them that, you know, your client just gave away 20 grand of your money mm-hmm. to my seller. Yeah. Right? Isn't that crazy? Yeah. It's, it's unbelievable. Like the, if everyone knew the truth, I don't think anyone would ever realize, like sometimes I always question like how do real estate deals actually even happen? Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like how did that even get closed? So, you know, I, you know, you were always like focus on yelp are you still focusing a lot on yelp right now a good amount i would say maybe maybe a third of it is on online reviews mm-hmm. for our business a third is from past clients and a third is referrals yeah yeah so are yelp, you guys like yelp are you great. like prospecting i know you have a team of what six or five yeah we have five producing agents two in training and um yeah i mean we're always prospecting uh i think in our in our industry though people come kind of find us i mean in our market and so that was my claim to fame right being able to be f- findable online whether it be for yelp or for google ads or just whatever it may be that people are searching for your market you know real estate agent that they're going to find you and so it's been a lot harder now if you go on yelp now for example you know you got like sponsored ad there's like at least nine ads know, before crazy? you get to organic so, but before it was just like, it was just organic that was it yeah right and they started like, oh we can monetize on these real estate agents and it's all they're not very productive. Real well, and that's the thing too, is like, that's what always worries me about everything is like, you got to pay to play. You got to pay to play and like everything's ad revenue. And like the hard part is even being here, it's like, okay, like, oh, you got to be spending on referral gifts to your partners or your well, past clients. And you got to be paying for this and you got to pay for that. It's like, dude, I'm just paying everywhere. Yeah, like yeah. I need to still make some money around here. Yeah. Well, what are the platforms? I mean, what other platforms are, uh, do, do you run your business off of that? that All you, social media. Yeah. Like yeah. I'm 90% off social. So it's all other people's platforms too, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And so that's the thing that we kind of get worried about. Like I get worried about is that like, I'll say this, like I know the algorithm of Instagram and Facebook have cut down so much. Like when I first started, I got so much more traction than I have now because I know I have to pay to play. So yeah. I get a little pointer to some people. Like I run ads to my friends on Facebook. So I export my friends list and I run ads to my friends because I know they don't see my posts. So I run calculated ads to them so they see that I'm still doing business. Oh, wow. That's a good tip. Yeah. So if that's, you guys out there that don't know that, that's, literally, that's, really, like, that's a really good they, tip. People should be paying me for this. <laughs> but like, honestly, because I know like even uh, Katie said today, I think it's like a 3% rate where people see what you do. And right. so it's like, I have to pay to play. Like, I, and, and which I'm fine with. Yeah. Like, I think that's why I get so mad at people and are like, why am I not? It's like, dude, it's like, it's like you're, you think you should get free advertisement. You got to pay to play a little yeah. bit. Yeah. But you get this podcast now. This is your, this is your content. This is my content. Right? Yeah. So that, that's a great thing about doing podcasts. Yeah. So why, when's your podcast starting? <laughs> Look, oh, <laughs> is this in the talks? Am I breaking some, the, no, some it's, news? No, it's been in talks for three years. And, oh, and, yeah. and so we, we, we bought all the gear. I got the studio. And what then are you just waiting there, for? And then the same, same, same thing in terms of, I just got busy. Right. We noticed you don't keep walking by yeah. like you've never been seeing <laughs> us over here. You got your tea. You said you'd jump in in a minute. So what what's what's the hold up on the little podcast? I think it's just busy. Yeah. Yeah. You know, with the market the way it was and just, you know, uh, our, I mean, business started starting to shoot up. It was just really tough to, to, to focus on, on creating content as well as, 
as, as well as selling and selling real estate. So what was it like? What's the like goal for the podcast? So see, yeah, like we have our, we, we've had a few, we've had cool places, cool people. So we'd always go on location and do yeah. podcasts like in restaurants or boxing rings to support small businesses. Yeah. And then COVID hit and yeah. we started what's good in Riverside that people come to our office and now we're doing the real estate I podcast. Like so we're doing this. Like what was your idea on what podcast you want to do? I actually wanted to go travel the nation and just interview all the Wall Street Journal agents. Nice. And go say, hey, I just, I just. We have uh, one right here. Yeah, I know. The, we're the big ones. You can be the first one. <laughs> Yeah, actually, we can do it. Come over here. Let me, we can, we can run this right you'll back. Be, you'll be my first, uh, my first, 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 first podcast. Uh, yeah. Come here. Come here, Brett. All right. Brett Jennings, real estate experts. Yeah. I just heard he, you know, top, top one. What did you guys do? 1.8 billion? We're, we're tracking for 1.2. We're about, okay. Are you going to be able to do the audio? I guess I can hand over. Yeah. So you're doing how much? We're, we're, track, we're currently year to date uh, about 750 million. Okay. So we're on track for about 1.2 billion this year. All right. So that's, that's not not too shabby. I mean, it's okay. <laughs> I mean, you know what I mean. So great job on the panel today. I will say I learned a lot from you. Um, what does it mentally take to be at the level that you're at? And I don't. And I hate the things that people always say. Like a saying I always say to people is like, just be, the people you idolize have the same problems you do, but just bigger. And you just don't realize their life's actually harder than yours. How do you handle the mental stress of being who you are? <laughs> well, there's, there's actually, if you're, if you're, if you're in your zone and you're authentically you, there's no stress, mm -hmm. right? Because, um, there's no friction between who you want to be and who you are. And I'm not saying that I'm perfectly in that place, but I feel like the more aligned I get with, um, you know, kind of who I am being and who I aspire to be, um, the more results kind of flow effortlessly from, from a place like, I call it orders of creation. You know, like when you start out and you're setting a goal, um, you start out on a journey to success, right? In the beginning, it's like, you don't know what you're capable of. You have an idea that you want to push for this thing and it takes effort. Um, and so, but as, as you begin to successfully realize and achieve those goals, then, um, you know, what, what was previously a goal is now just, a, is it's your, a standard. it's a standard, right? Yeah. And that, and that you, you fall back to, you know, you're, you're going to, you, it's what you expect. Um, but to continually transcend those, uh, just requires, you know, this, this constant expansion of your thinking. And so for me personally, one of the things was getting around always constantly, being, Austin, don't make me get you on this podcast too. Yeah, being being you purpose being purposeful about putting myself in environments and in relationships with people, um, you know, that were three or four steps ahead of where I want to be, and what unconsciously happens in those relationships, you're like, you know what, like this person's just like me. They're 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 not superhuman. They're not walking on water. Like, and and it's not like you're sizing them up, but unconsciously there's something that like, okay, well if he can do it, I can do it. And, and that's been, that's been that progressive journey. Was that, was that them, you going to those people to ask for help or mentorship? Or is that, that more you, so you, you kind of seeing what they're doing, figuring it out and kind of doing something and the add, adding your flavor to a, a, it? A little bit of both. Um, you know, I, 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 you know, you hear a lot about masterminds and like probably four, let's see, it's 20, seven years ago was one, one of the first masterminds that I, excuse me, that I ever paid to be a part of. At the time, it was like 15 grand. I was like, holy crap, like I'm going to spend 15 grand just to go hang out with these guys. And we'd meet four times a year and we did a hot seat, right? Everyone would present their business. Um, what were the challenges they were experiencing? What was their best opportunity that they had taken advantage of that kind of moved the needle in their business or their life? And that, f that formula was pretty game changing. Like, because, you, you know, every six months you'd get up in front of a group of your 15 of your peers, kind of open the kimono and you're like, all right, this is where I'm at. And, and the more real you could be about that, um, sharing the greatest opportunities, like, man, we harvested so many things that we implemented and applied, but on your greatest challenge, you'd have, you know, a group of 10 or 12 people. There's rapid fire. Oh, I had that problem. Like, here's how you solve it. So like what you're doing in that environment is you're collapsing time frames. you know, mm -hmm. cause when you're, when you, what, what has to happen when you want to go to pursue a goal, right? And w if you're here and you want to get there, what stands in the middle is growth and growth only happens by becoming conscious of your unconscious behavior, you know, and, and you don't, and, and getting gain growth comes from awareness and awareness is becoming conscious of your unconscious behavior and, um, setting those goals, 
finding what those limits are, you know, seeing the limiting in, limitations in your own thinking and then finding people who've transcended it. I mean, like you just, yeah, it helps you pop to that next level. You know, obviously being someone sitting in front of two massive producers and being a young guy that's, you know, been in it six years and, 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 and only doing $20 million, what, what was the, the click? Do you remember what year it was for you, Alex, that you just thought like, okay, because sometimes I'll still be like, am I doing this? Like, am I still like, am I going to make it? Like, am I, am I going to be on a certain level? What year was it for you? If you remember or what moment all of a sudden you're like, boom, and then I'm going to ask you the same question. A year. Was it a year? Was it a was moment? It a year, a yeah. Was there a breakthrough year where you're like, all of a sudden you were like, I, I made, or, I'm making it or like, sometimes I'll be driving in the car. Honestly, I'll sometimes I'll be driving in the car and I'll be like going to a list after a listing appointment that I just got. And I'll be like, I'm a real estate agent. I'm actually doing this. Do you ever have any moments like that? Or was there a moment like that where you didn't just wake up one day and be Alex? Oh man, I think that, uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, first of all, I, mean, I feel really, really grateful to be a real estate agent, especially in the area that I sell in on the high price points, right? I mean, yeah, I'm who, are I you mean, hiring? Cause I want to come in <laughs> <laughs> a little bit higher than my 500,000, but continue. <laughs> but I think, I mean, I, I don't think, I don't think there's, there's always a time where, oh, you know what? I, I think I made it. I think I, I'm here, I'm here for good. I made it. I'm going to be, I'm a real estate agent. I've made my name, my reputation. People know me. And then it kind of just goes to the next level from there. So, I mean, before joining side, I mean, I was probably handling maybe seven, eight listings at one time. Right. And now we got like 16. And so someone went to the next level. So now I'm thinking, okay, okay, now I made it. And then I go, okay, so what's next? So that, that making it is, seems to always be, I'm, I think I'm always, sickness, you think? Like, is it a sickness? I that? think it's like surprising. I mean, just, just always thinking like, you know, when you hit a goal, I'm going to hit 10 million, right? Well, then you hit 10 million. What happens? A lot of agents just basically close up shop for the rest of the year. And then you go, okay, I'm going on vacation, right? Mm -hmm. But no, you got to get that through goal and figure out what that, okay, let's go to 15 million now. If you hit 15 million, what, what, what's next? And then your through goal is going to be, okay, let's, let's go 25. And then you just going to keep on evolving and changing and you just being able to not never just say, I, I'm, I'm uh, complacent, right? Or, or I'm happy with it. So what was your breakout year? Yeah, for me, it was probably... Um if I look back on it, it was the, the, the year that I decided that real estate was, wasn't going to be a means to an end. Like it wasn't like real estate's going to get me to some place that I'm going to do something else. And that was probably, believe it or not, like I was like five years into the business. And cause I was like, Oh, I'm going to just make money in real estate, crush it, put money into apartments and, and retire from cash flow rentals and go do coaching business and life coaching. And then my mentor was like, what, what are you doing? Why don't you just coach and pour into your people now? And I didn't, I hadn't attracted that level of talent, like people that really wanted to grow. And, um, but that was, that was the big aha. That was the game changing year that like we broke, we, we'd hit a plateau and we were stuck at like 50 million. Um, and the next year we went to hundred and then 150 and, and just kept, kept going from there. So it's fine. Basically finding, finding my purpose and aligning it with my business so that my business became a vehicle for me to fulfill my purpose. You know what you told, what you said, or you said that earlier when you're on your panel and that, that like, I feel like my mindset is like where you are at, like I'm five and a half years in and I'm like, all right, I'm gonna do this for a while. I'm going to bank some money. I'm going to do this. And then like, cause like the side keeps on arguing with me about growing a team. You need to grow a team. You need to get a team. I'm like, I don't know if I want to grow a team. And so like the crossroad that it's funny that it's like you were in the same spot think mindset that I'm in right now. And it's like, I'm like trying to fight it, but people are like, just, just give up, just Adam, just give up, build the team, do what you're supposed to do, make your money and then coach people that are here. Well, the team too is, I mean, you got me, Brett and I both have teams, but our teams are like black and white night and day, right? In terms of the size, in terms of systems. I mean, I mean we, we, we obviously share some same tools, but I mean, I can't even imagine going close to a billion dollars in a year. I can't even imagine that with the number of people that I have. Where were you at when you hit a billion dollars? Well, we're, well, this is the year. So we're at 750 million. So what are you going to do when you hit a billion? Um, I'll, Disneyland. I'll, we'll, we'll, we'll celebrate the moment for sure. <laughs> celebrate the moment and then appreciate it and, and then uh, cast, you know, reset the vision for, for what, what's next. You know, because it, it's, uh, it's the progressive realization of, you know, that what's next that happiness comes from growth, you know, and, and growth and, or, or progress. And, uh, you know, if we're, if we're expanding and we're growing and we feel like we're doing good and doing more then that's, that's the cycle that I just want to continue. Now, 
Alex, what's a goal that's not financial that if someone who watches you online would not know that you have? A goal that's not financial for me personally. Yeah. So if it, it could be it could be more family time. It could be wanting to pick up a new sport. Yeah. What is something that you have that obviously you have an online presence is how I know you yeah. and we all watch you, but what is something that no one would know based on your Instagram or YouTube? Well, yeah, I've alluded to Instagram on one instance, but I just started getting into jujitsu, Brazilian jujitsu. Nice. I've been rolling and um, super addicted to it. It's just... Uh, when someone's trying to choke you out, <laughs> you cannot be thinking about an escrow falling apart. Yeah. Right? It totally. So my goal is to, within the next year, get my blue belt. Okay. Yeah. So when you get your blue belt, are we going to make a video or what? Yeah. It it's was- funny you say that. I have a small business in back home that they're uh, jiu-jitsu, and we're, we have a plan. We've been working on going back and forth. What to expect on your first day of jiu-jitsu? Because your first day of jiu-jitsu is very scary. Because I've wanted to do jiu-jitsu, but I've been so nervous about the first day. That we're going to shoot a video with the company on what to expect in your first day of jiu-jitsu. Do it. Right. Do what it. about you? What is something, you know, obviously you're on the panels and, 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 and everyone talks about it. What is something that you have a goal that most people probably don't know about you? I mean, it's, it's, it's going to sound pretty small and pretty simple, but it's, uh, it's, I, it's a commitment is what it is. Uh, and it's to spend 30 minutes with my son three times a week video gaming. Because, like, for the longest time he's been a gamer and I'm like, well, you game too much, too much screen time. And I just decided that, you know what, like... I'm going to enter his world and just <laughs> be with him and hang out and connect. And so that's, uh, that's been one of my things. What game does he play? Uh, Minecraft and, um, Roblox, Roblox. <laughs> yeah. Minecraft and Roblox. <laughs> so, I mean, obviously it's been such a crazy year and you guys have been in the industry so long. How have you guys been able to make the transition from, you know, a lot of agents have never made the transition to video like you have or technology or growth. What is something that has helped you kind of, be like, okay, this is where the industry is going and I want to get there. I think, I think willing to try things mm-hmm. and, um, I'm sure Brett can input this as well, but I mean, trying things, just, just trying them out and not being scared and it may not work out. If it doesn't work out, then fine. You can make adjustments, but rather than always just sitting there being paralyzed by, Oh, should I do this? Or should I do that? Oh, I don't know. I, I, I don't want to do it unless it's going to be success, successful, but no, just do it. Yeah. Stop complaining. But just do it. Do you, too, right. do you think too many agents worry about ROI on everything they do? Um, I mean, the ROI is important. Um, do too many agents worry about ROI? I, I think when you reduce everything down to, to make it transactional and it's all it's all about um, ROI, um, I, I don't know if that's the best lens to look look at look at things through. A um, couple things that I'm like what we're at with the perspective I'm looking at is is ROT return on time. I can get more money. I just can't get more time. So um, you know, it's it's in. At the beginning in the early stages you're chasing money you're wanting to want more and more income and uh you know now it's like it's the pursuit of don't chase money chase time because i can take that time that i get and i can invest that in making more money if i choose or i can invest it in time with my family or whatever but that just that mind shift of instead of chasing money chase time yeah. and did you, did you ever see that gary v um gary, gary v was giving a speech and uh someone raised uh, their hand and said, what is Gary, what is the ROI on that social media? And Gary goes, what's the ROI of your mother? <laughs> <laughs> How do you qualify that? Well, and I think too, I think that's the issue too many people have when it comes to like video or things like that. It's just like, well, what do you get out of that? Yeah. It's like, sometimes I've learned is like just the comment, like you said, that comment of people being like, you're the Gary V of, so- of real estate. Like that comment means everything to me because that's the goal I'm shooting for one day. So what is something you guys have been doing moving forward into maybe 2020, into 2022, he's a pro. <laughs> 2022 that like you see on the horizon, <clears throat> you know, obviously a lot of things have changed with 20, you know, with the pandemic and things like that. What is something you guys are trying to shoot for the future in your business? Yeah, I mean, I, for for us, it, it's you know we we feel like we're iterating with with side as a partner um, on kind of the the new model of real estate, which I'll call Team Ridge. It's a hybrid between a team and a brokerage, you know, where um, both both types of business models can coexist. Um, you know, what it, specifically what the word Team Ridge means is like it's it's higher splits than you typically would find on a team, but way more support than you'd find at a typical brokerage because what that supports is what we're in what we're seeing right is the technology trends are 
um, and portals like Zillow, Homelight, like they're consolidating business, right? They're creating consumer awareness about taking what was once like the commoditized agent that the big brokerages all turned us into, which was just one agent at a big company and consumers couldn't differentiate between one and the next. But now through like, you know, online review sites and Zillow and Homelight, you know, you, you, they gave transparency to, to who's doing good business and who's doing a lot of business. And that's forcing consumers to choose those people more and more. So like, we're gonna see just more, fewer agents doing more and more transactions, right? And in order to do that, you need those efficiencies. And so, um, you know, companies like Side and models like what I, what I call Team Ridge are providing the opportunity for really talented agents to, to, to do that volume of transactions, but without killing themselves doing it, you know? And where they can have a great income and great lifestyle, and that's that's what excites me. I think that's what the future is. I have a quick follow-up question to that. Do you feel, you guys have been around so long, and I feel like it's like the Amazon effect. Do you feel like clients now are have never been more needy with communication because of I order something it's there in two days do you I, do you feel like every I feel like update need updates you need to update non update now yeah I mean that's that's what's driven um, the rise of teams is, is the consumer expectations right they want a 24 7 experience push button buy house push button I want my agent to respond and, and it's like impossible for right a solo agent to be able to be that 24 7 but teams can execute and deliver on that experience really well um, and I think it's cool because it's totally transforming the industry with this thing that used to be, you know, it was like a, a solo agent sport and everyone kind of kept cards close to their vest. And now it's, it's you know, because of consumer demands and the, and the rise of teams, it's forced us to, um, you know, collaborate. And it's kind of elevating things for everyone who's at least open to it, you know. And yeah. about that, Alex? yeah, I think the key to that, just to add on to that, is that when you when the team is growing, to be able to keep that consistency and that client experience, right, which is the hardest part, right? Because solo agent, you know everything that's going on with you when you're talking to your client. Then the, now I got to tell my partner the same thing and go back and forth. And that additional layer of communication is hard. Um, for me, I mean, to, to your question about the 2022, um, you guys would laugh at this, but I think I'm going to start farming. Yeah. Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> I, I remember, like in which I, way? Like I'm, I'm going to postcarding or postcards, yes, postcards to to my neighborhood, mm -hmm. which I haven't done in you know ever, and I've always said I want to do a farm. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't farm, but then now I know that you know I want to be in an area. I want to be the community. I want to be the mayor of like like you're the mayor. mayor. So you're gonna start a podcast yeah, yeah. of your hometown? Yeah, Is that gonna happen. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna be on him now. I'm gonna be DM him. I'm gonna be texting you once a week. Go. What's the first podcast? When's the first podcast? When's the first podcast? Do you guys do heavy media? Uh, you mean like like social media? Uh, yeah. We're. I mean, we're we're probably not nearly as active as Alex, but um, yeah, we're we're on Facebook, Instagram, and post several times a week. Um, but it it for me, it's it's building brand presence. You know, we don't we don't look to to it to be an active um, direct response lead generation, you know, like what's your home value or that kind of stuff. It's more more brand building and, and, and yeah. yeah. So obviously we've been doing this for a half hour and you guys are two busy people. I mean, guys probably searching for Alex right now because he probably has 17 <laughs> other videos he needs to shoot. Alex, why don't you finish this off on like, you know, obviously the people that watch this podcast are, are newer agents. And I think sometimes it's like, as I'm sitting between you two human beings, I'm like, I'll never be at this place, but you, you know, like you were like, we were one time at 50 million and then we were hit a plateau at 50. So it, it, I think it's hard sometimes when we're sitting down and watching you guys on stage that it's like, like you said, everyone is human. You can get that. What is some advice you can give those people that, that think that your level is unreachable when you know it is? Yeah, I think I would say that, um, I think, I think it's definitely reachable. I think the, so, so marketplace, choosing your marketplace, right? Uh, the only way that you can get a raise in the real estate business is to raise your price point. Mm -hmm. No one else can give you a raise. No, the seller is not going to say, Hey, I'll give you more commission than, 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 than you originally agreed upon. And so you really got to raise your price point. If you raise your price point, move to a higher price point area, then you can always sell downwards to like a I lower said, price are point. Are you hiring? Yeah. So I can come up yeah. here. I got nothing down there. <laughs> <laughs> and my second thing or, is just or no, are you hiring? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'll triple my price point. I can do half the work. Yeah. Perfect. And the second thing is just basically, basically, just basically, uh, you know, get if you're a new agent, just don't care about the commission mm -hmm. and care about just touches on the ball. Yeah, get touches on the ball and just learn. 
right? Take the best and then leave the rest, right? As, as they say. Yeah. But to be able to just be be all hung up with, with oh, how much am I going to get? Was my split I mean, when you're going to join a team? You join a team, and you know, a brand new agent. What other team is going to allow you to touch so many different uh, uh, times of the transaction, mm -hmm. right? And so many different deals, and so many different clients, and learn all that stuff. So as a new agent, I suggest go get the touches hey, of the ball. Podcast over here. Thanks, guys. Yeah. That's honestly that's the reason I joined Side was because I am now sitting between two guys like you that what other brokerage is that possible? And like you were saying earlier, like when you talk to someone who's three steps ahead of you, you cut down on the mistakes that they made because we all make the same mistakes. It's literally the same thing over and over and over. So what advice could you give a younger agent who's maybe in that position? Or let's go team lead for you. Let's go with a team lead that is stuck at 50 million and wants to get to that 150 or 200 million dollars. It's the same. It's the same equation as it is for that brand new agent, whether it's a brand new agent or a team leader. It, it, it's 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 find someone who's creating the results that you want, and you know, find out what they're thinking, not just what they're doing. Most people will just copy what they're doing, but but el elicit their mindset. Find out what they believe about what they do and why they do what they do, and then copy their ac actions, and you'll get the same results. Like, and 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 be humble. Like I've I could have went in my first year in real estate. Um, I certainly had was skilled enough, like or competent enough as a salesperson, and, and in, in re relating to people and knew enough about real estate that I could have been a solo agent my first year. But I purposefully got on a team because I knew I would, um, you know, I would do more deals. And like Alex said, I'd touch the ball, I'd get my hands on the ball a lot more than I would, you know, the average the average agent right now, you know, new agent might sell if they're full time two to four houses or something their first year. And, you know, I, I was able to participate in like 20 transactions my first year. I sold 12 myself. Um, but that, you know, I, I got five years of experience in my first year. And the same thing with, um, you know, someone who's an aspiring team leader. Find those, those other uh, team owner, team leaders that are, you know, again, a few steps ahead of where you want to be and, and just dig in with them. You know, and you, what you'll find is most successful people are very generous with um, their time because I know for myself, I, I, I wouldn't have got to where I am unless there was people who were willing to share. So take advantage of that and um, you'll accelerate your path. Well, shoot, you're sitting down with a guy you don't even know, so I appreciate that. <laughs> so, guys, there's f a few moments in my real estate career that I, I will remember, and this is definitely one of them. I can't thank you boys enough. I appreciate you guys and uh, thanks for everything you guys do. Thank you, Adam. All right, guys, till next time. Peace.